We're on our way to the children's hospital. Eva's not moving around like she should be. Come on, Eva. Get with the program. This is day two of my daily vlogs being actually daily and the day I record them. So today's vlog is gonna be about Annie going to the uh, Abler Hospital, getting a checkup, and then she has to go to her father's factory. That is an interesting trip. through her tests and I sit here hanging out with all the other Chinese people. Hello. He was smiling a second ago. Just finished bird bird test. What's the next test? Blood, right? No blood. No blood. So she has to eat a sandwich, doctor's orders before the next test. Big head. Yeah. That's good. No, too good. I cannot have her out for naturally. Is that what he said? No. Give it the head to me. Uh -huh. Doctor, we know she does. Uh -huh. Means a lot of brains. Hmm. This is her spine. 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 <laughs> Daddy is big. <laughs> Annie's worried that the baby's too big, not gonna be able to come out naturally. <laughs> if her belly is too big, then it's yours, Dad. <laughs> We're both pretty good on the belly. The mountain. Mount Eva. Mount Everest. <laughs> She's inside. She's oversized. But she's got the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck. She's, she's already trying on jewelry, necklaces and whatnot. Hopefully it doesn't create a problem later. What's it say? Big head, big belly, long arm, long leg. Wow, she's pretty tall, huh? has a habit of not doing what she's told. Annie's back there and they want Eva to move so that they can get some sort of a test test done, but she's staying still. And in which they want her to stay still, she moves around. I hope that's not a uh, indication of what she's gonna be like on the outside. Go to bed, no, wake up. No, I wanna go to bed. Whew, Layla. So natural birth is still okay. I don't want to have pain for 20 hours and at the end they told me we have to take you to do Cut open, yeah. Well, if you want a C-section, they'd probably be able to make this, you know, you won't have a scar for long. I don't want them to cut up my belly. Before we go to the factory, we're gonna grab some lunch. Sichuan is a province 1,500 kilometers 
west of here. It's known for uh, spicy food. My favorite chicken dish in China is called koshui chi. Koshui means uh, saliva. I don't know if that's the reason they name it koshui chi, but I, I always say it's because I, uh, I always get when it comes out. That's koshui chi. That's radish. And that's, well, pretty obvious. <laughs> In uh, China, the bones are not excluded when you're uh, having a chicken or a beef dish. You get very used to dancing the food in around your mouth and just stripping the meat off of the bone and spitting the bone out back onto the plate. You know, when I grew up, I, I always learned that spitting was impolite. <laughs> but here, you have no choice. Another one of my favorites is uh, fried nangua. Nangua is pumpkin, but uh, this ain't no pumpkin pie. This is fried. Uh, when they first gave me fried pumpkin, I was like, what is this and can I have more? <laughs> so good. And he's frustrated. The doctors told her that uh, she's getting a bit too large and she needs to stop eating so much. When you say those words to Annie, it's like stop, stop breathing. I'm not eating stop. too much. I just eat normal, like even less. Before I pregnant, I eat more. Our level is crazy eaters eat a lot, eat normal. So she, we went from crazy eaters to eat a lot. Annie needs uh, some sweets, so she told me she wanted to order ice cream. You're just gonna have your nose like an arrow. Look at that thing. It's like an arrow pointing down, and then you have a piggy nose. Poor kid. It's gonna be a total mess. So this is Annie's family's factory. Specializing in all sorts of different plastic picture frames. It's pretty incredible. I think the combined sales uh, in the adjacent blocks here is around $10 billion. You go to Walmart or go anywhere in the United States that sells like plastic picture frames, Annie can point out, oh, that's, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. This whole community here makes picture frames. Hi. The next computer might make forks and spoons, the next might make hats. And they all group together. It's interesting. One of the best things that living abroad give you is perspective. Especially when you walk down like a traditional factory district like this. These people live completely different lives and anybody in the Western world. Hard days of working on a machine in a hot factory with nasty chemicals, growing their vegetables and the food that they eat out in front of the factory in little farms or farms that are like just adjacent to the factory district. I, I mean, I tell all my friends back home that if they had time to bring their families to China and when they do, Try to make sure to get off the beaten path. Get a little dirty. See some of the places where people live. Allow your mind to process the fact that people 
around the world live completely differently. I used to complain when I was a kid about maybe not getting the toy I wanted or not being able to afford a car or, you know, maybe this job didn't pay enough. You know, a lot of this typical first worldish stuff, but that all changed when I moved to China. Gaining perspective on the world gives you a valuable lesson in what to really cherish. Do you want to cherish things that you have or do you want to cherish the experiences that you have? China taught me experiences are much more valuable. Battery's dead. Leaving the factory. Bye-bye.